All right, so we're going to start our breakdowns with the guy right now at the top of the draft board, Marcelo Mayer, right in our backyard out of Southern California. Uh, he's about 6'3", 188, swings it from the left side, throws it from the right side. That's really come onto the scenes over the past few months. Yeah, he's blown up. Yep. He's and 100% blown up. This is going to be a cool guy to watch over the next few years as he matures in a big league organization. Uh, so we're going to pull some video of him. But Eugene, when you look at a prospect like Marcelo Mayer, if you were going to talk to the Pittsburgh Pirates, if they're really considering taking this kid number one overall, what would you tell them? What do you like about the swing? What do you like about the actions? Well, first of all, if we're going to talk about the swing, I like that it's simple and it's effective. It gets the job done. He gets into the front side here really, really well. And if you notice how often he rolls to the outside of his front foot, it happens a lot, but it's happening directionally this way towards the pitcher, which is nice. He stays closed. He doesn't leak open with his hips too early, which gives him adjustability to the middle of the field. A kid like this, right, with a path like that, if he's able to keep landing on the hip on that in that spot, he's going to be able to adjust and stay through balls. Look, the hardest part about hitting, it, people think it's like this or this. Really, it's this, right? It's covering because uh, the great ones, they're on time when they're on time. They're on time when they're early, and they're on time when they're late. They have coverage in multiple places. But for that to happen, the first thing that has to happen is this. You gotta be able to get into that front side. He does that really, really well. Uh, the path is clean. It's simple and repeatable. We got really nice moves from the middle of the body and from the lower half here. You're gonna see some recoil with his pelvis. Right after impact, you're gonna start to see it work back this way. You're gonna see that back foot and back leg kind of work back behind him with that little scissor kickback move, and that's gonna help anchor him. That's part of what helps also hold his direction while also giving him some force. So I don't know where this kid was the last couple of years. I'm not sure why he wasn't on the boards. I don't know if this is something that's just kind of come together or these are things that he's worked on, but he's making it look really effortless and really easy, which is pretty sexy to watch. The one thing that I would like to see from him a little bit more, a lot of times he looks like he's trying to forcibly finish his swing around rather than being able to strike the object right here. I'd like to see him leverage his weight and stop on baseballs just a little bit more often. That's one of the things you're going to see as a signature to a lot of the best hitters, not just in history, but especially in the major leagues right now. When you're watching Tatis, when you're watching Trout, these guys leverage their weight into the baseball and stop on that baseball, right? It's like cracking a whip. you got to be able to stop to send the energy. And when you're looking at guys like Henry Davis that we're going to talk about in a little bit, when you're talking about guys like Sal Freelich, right, those are the things that they're doing that give them the ability to also be up here. Now, he makes it look sexy, and the moves are, they're clean, and hes I think he's going to stick. This is a big leader. He's one of the top two, top three middle infield guys. It's like we talked about, if you're going to take a guy this high, especially a high school kid, one of the boxes you have to check is how easy do they make the game look? And really, as we pointed out, whether he's in the field, throwing or swinging, the game comes very natural to him. It's very casual. The moves are very clean. It's incredibly efficient. And it's not just efficient in a way that it looks good. It's efficient because it it's works. Effects. It you doesn't. Know. Sometimes there's fugazis out there. For those of you who don't know what that is, uh, it's a, a Italian way of saying like it's a faker, right? There's guys that have the body, but they don't have the baseball movements or the the aptitude. There's guys that. Uh, you know, they look the part, but they can't actually get it done. There's guys that have pretty looking swings, but they're long and slow and, you know, so uh, he can definitely do it. He, he can do the things that you need to do. He doesn't look like he's trying to crank everything over the right field fence. He looks like he's trying to stay through the middle, which is putting his body in, the, in some of those good positions. So I, uh, I mean, I'm, de I'm definitely a fan. I'm definitely a fan. I'm not sure if I'm a 1-1 fan, but I'm, I'm definitely a fan. Yeah, and we talked a little bit about last year, uh, him and Jordan Lawler were really two high school prospects at the shortstop position that really separated themselves from the pack. And I know when we were talking in our conversation, this is a kid that you would probably take over Jordan Lawler, is that correct? Uh, here's what I would say really clearly to any big league organization. If you're looking at Brady House, Jordan Lawler, and Marcelo Mayer, and he, and, and I, I mean, also you got to include, I really like Stovall. We'll talk about him later too. I think he's disgusting and I think he's going to rake in the big leagues. Um, but w when you're looking at those guys, Lawler has the body, House has the body. Neither one of them has the uh, current and present ability. Uh, they're, they're not, 
they don't do what this guy does the way he does it. They don't move the way this guy does. They're athletes. They got tremendous bodies. Bubba Chandler, tremendous athlete. Uh, but he has the actions. His body moves the way it needs to move when it needs to move, <laughs> right? So for me, this plays. And one of the biggest things for me, if we're talking first round, and we've had a lot of talks about this, is the hit tool. I want to see a guy who can barrel up baseballs consistently because if you're struggling against high school competition or even at, on the elite circuit, like if you're a first rounder in high school, you should be hitting 500 in high school, right? If you're a first rounder in high school, you should be making it look so much easier than everyone else in your peer group. And, and that includes striking baseballs. It's the hardest thing to do in the game. And if you're drafting somebody as an offensive prospect, right, in the first round, they better be the best ball striker in the country. Because if you're going to take a guy with potential that has a ton of swing and miss or swing issues or, or you, even if you feel like you haven't seen from it like that, that's, it's probably not going to work. And it's probably going to be, uh, whether it's a small overhaul or a big one, you're going to have to count on your, your uh, player development system and count on your coaches to actually do the right things the way they need to be done to pull it out of that guy. And when you look at those other guys that I mentioned, like I'll take Stovall over Lawler and House all day long, not even a question. Uh, and and I actually like the way Stovall leverages his weight on the ball better than Mayer. I think if Mayer did what Stovall does at that point in his swing, I think Mayer is a clear, clear, clear 1-1. One, one. Mm -hmm. For sure. And that's something we'll talk about in a little bit. But I think just a lot of things to like about him. You're talking about at the shortstop position. He's got three plus tools. He's got the hit. He's got the glove. And he's got the arm. Uh, so you're really talking about a position that I think is going to be become one of the most exciting positions in baseball. And we're currently seeing it. you got Wander Franco that just got called out. He's been the number one prospect in baseball. You're looking at Fernando Tatis. You're talking about your Corey Seegers. Like, that's going to be a really cool position to watch going forward because you're seeing not just exceptional athletes, but guys that have a great feel for the game, a great feel for the barrel. And I think you're looking at this year's draft class, three of the top six prospects are shortstops. So we can definitely see the way the game is going. Right for now. sure. I think in the next five to 10 years, we're going to start to see what it looks like in Little League and the big leagues. I think we're going to see more and more two-way players. I think a lot of the guys with the better bats you're going to see uh, have with pretty, I think you're going to see a lot more two-way guys. You're going to see a lot more, uh, say, shortstops that are hitting in the three-hole. Uh, you know, because generally, you know, as you look down levels, uh, your best athletes are up the middle of the field. Uh, your best baseball players are at short and generally also pitch. Uh, and they're generally the best hitters on the team at those young ages, too. And as you move up in levels, you just keep moving those guys all over the field. I mean, how many college teams uh, bring in, you know, 10 different shortstops and just move them to different positions? How many big league teams draft shortstops and move them to other positions? You know, so I think we're going to see uh, guys that have the ability to stick it short and be able to be able to do the thing with the bat, you know? Yeah, 100%. So just uh, I think in a lot of ways it can be a very safe pick. So it really just kind of depends on what Pittsburgh wants to do. But uh, Marcelo Mayer, a lot of really exciting things and uh, very excited to kind of see what he looks like two, three years from now. For sure.